Well, got the TV turned up in the background because I'm pretty sure y'all like that drama. Now, so the drama. Now, this is how it is. I know that you know I've said some harsh things in these videos, but it's true, man. I mean, it's like when you when you trying to do nice things, you try to do the good things. You try to do the bad things. You try to whatever you try to do, there's always somebody trying to pull you back. Look at the person who's been trying to pull you back and you make the decision. Now, this other story is when I was also working in Berkeley. I was a maintenance guy over at this apartment complex. And drama's drama, so I'm just gonna get cut to the chase. This lady who had been trying to get an apartment for the last three years. Homeless sister down and out you know, finally had all her money and shit together. My friend, a white guy, who got me the job, paying me pretty good money, you know, he knew my situation, got me a good job, I just had to commute to the Bay Area, it was like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, and on the way home, it was from 45 minutes to three hours to get home, but this man got me a job because he believed in my work. Let me skip that. So, he's going on vacation, he asked me, was everything all right? I was going to be gone for two, three days. I forget. I knew this other lady was going to come in and shit. She didn't like black people. She was from Guadalajara or something like that. When her family first got here to America, her father was beaten and robbed by three or four black guys. So she never really did have any respect for anybody black. So I knew she was going to come in. So I'm just like, make sure everything was like my buddy told me to have it. When the lady come in, she could do her job. You know, she wouldn't have to see me because I already know what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, this black woman comes in a couple hours after the boss had already left for the airport. And he told me he was going to call me before... She she got there, yeah, an hour after he left to go take care of his business so he can leave. So he told me he was going to call me before he headed to the airport to, you know, he went home, you know, he was going to call me. So, um, the lady shows up, she has this check, the money order, a money order, a check, and, no, it was a money order and a check for her first and last, because she gets, she had to have her money with the people's monies, and people, you know, how they have these programs that pay your first and last, or they, they help you pay you to get you in, or something like that. So, the lady had the money order and the check, and she's like, can I move in? I'm like, the manager ain't here, I can't let you move in right now. When I get the word, I will let you know if you can move in. And looking at this lady's condition, and you know, she had this, like, trying to give me this shit to hand, her, hand me the money, these checks. I said, ma'am, if you want me to put that in the safe for you, I can put that in the safe for you. And when I get the phone call, you know, your money will be here. I shouldn't have did that. She just told her, no, come back Monday. So, as a matter of fact, it was fucking New Year's Eve. It was. So I'm getting ready to go home. You know, I haven't got my phone call yet. I didn't feel like staying in Berkeley that night. And I am getting ready, literally about to walk out the door. A truck pulls up. This chick still came with all her furnitures and shit. Fuck. I can't, I, I can't deal with this right now. So the apartment that she was going to get was on the second floor. That's where all the ladies were. So what I did was took the front door off the apartment. And I told her, I was like, you cannot move into this apartment because you do not have the say, the say so, the okay. At this point, I'm going to give you your money back. You have to come back Monday. But since you brought all your furniture here, I don't think there's going to be a problem because you have all your money. I'm going to lock your furniture away in one of the laundry rooms for you until Monday. I will be back tomorrow to unlock this room so you can get your furniture and take it off the premises until you're allowed to move in. I will do that for you. I will also pay for you stay at your friend's house for the two days, because it's like five dollars a night for a guest or whatever. It's one of those 
you'd have to be in the situation to understand what kind of living situation they had in this apartment complex. So, you know, I didn't think nothing of it. I got a phone call the next morning. Hey, you got to get here. The lady's moved her stuff in the apartment. They're like, how can she move her stuff in the apartment? There's no door. There's no door on the apartment. She moved in, put a sheet up. Broke into the laundry room, took her furniture out, put it in the apartment. Spent all the money on crack. So I show up. <laughs> you need to get this shit up out of here. You got to move all this stuff out of here. You don't have it okay to move in there. Nobody told you you can move in there. We came down to it. I got fired. For trying to help a black person she told these people that I took her money put it in the safe and now she can't find her money she told these people that the door was broken so that's why I took the door off but I told them to go ahead and move in now me and my wife had just split up I was making, it was like 1100 a week for some stupid, some stupid number I should not have been making. I have been making like, what, 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 I was making 960 a week before taxes. No, after, before tax, whatever, I don't know, I had like 1400 1500 to every two weeks or something after tax, whatever. I don't make that no more. And when the guy came to fire me, and I told him the story, he cried. He's like, I know. Her name always pops up, and we offer to give her a place, and she never has the money. This has been going on for three years. She get, she get in line to get the place and never have the money. And this white man cried while he fired me. I said to myself, how many times have I lost something and there was a black person right there, partially to blame, because I felt as if I got to help somebody. I got more stories like this. And it's sad because I haven't been that place in years. I still talk to my friend and that lady still has her apartment. I don't have a job, a permanent job, but she still got an apartment. And it's been at least, what, six years, seven years. I didn't get a thank you. I didn't get shit. Hell, it was bad. I got more stories like that. I got hundreds and hundreds of true stories of how black people have fucked me over. And I'm a black person. I got all kind of stories about when I tried to help young black guys start doing their music and rapping. Asians used to come. White kids used to rap for me. Told this one dude, I didn't like his attitude one time he was over at my house. Niggas came and robbed my shit up, stole my shit, took everything. A friend of mine, he went to my job instead of calling the police. The white lady across the street said, they were black guys, I didn't know. I asked her, I said, how many times you see black guys walking in and out of my house with TVs when you know I ain't home and my wife isn't home? Uh. Several times, but hey. I love my people. There ain't no unity amongst black people because black people are shady sometimes. You ain't gonna like these videos, but the truth hurts. So, you know, I'm getting this off my chest because I don't want to do videos like this. I didn't talk bad about white people, Mexicans, and I didn't point it at black people. But black people sometimes need to grow up. Until then, you've been tubed.